Mum and Laurie into everything. They lead pretty hectic lives, but there comes a time in everybody's life where it all catches up to you. The doctor said to him, how much, you know, do you have a drink? And Laurie said, oh yes, about five cans a night and 15, 18 of a weekend, Saturday, Sunday, and the guy, the doctor said, Jesus Christ, enough to kill you. So he's only meant to be 13 stone, and I think he's about 15 and a half, so he's got a long way to go. Mind you, I've seen him on so many diets, but this one might be a bit more precious because if he doesn't get a medical, he can't raise cars. That is absolutely ridiculous. Might just well have had a beer. Jesus Christ. Oh, can you put can you fill it up? It's, it's too much scotch. Why don't you have Contro on ice? No, we don't like it. That's too strong for me. I've only just like a little bit but of But there was only a little bit in there. It's just saying pretty strong. That's all I, can, all I can touch is scotch. You would honestly think that if you've got a problem, and he's been told quite severely from this doctor that you have got a problem, that he wouldn't want alcohol at all. If someone said I was dying of cancer because I smoke, I'd stop smoking. And yes. Laurie makes the final decision on everything. On everything. Unless he gives me... He might say, well, you, whatever you decide, I'll go with you. It means that he, he's free whichever way you're going to go. Now, you won't drink that either. What is it? Scotch and soda. Yes, I will. You won't. You won't like that. That's all right. Look at your face. <laughs> Better than nothing. <laughs> Where I go f full bore into something, he goes steadier. He thinks more. I sort of lash out. He will do a bit more thinking. He's a bit more diplomatic, perhaps. You think I'd be able to, um, instead of having in any girls, put a little lamb brisker each night? No way. A little wine. No I just said wine's way. Okay. No way. Wine's not going to be fattening. A little lamb brisker. Get me down a bottle. I've got something in the fridge, haven't you? No, you haven't. No way. You want this for? I want to read what's on up. Yeah, honestly, a little bit of red wine's not going to bite, you know, a couple of little glasses a night. It's certainly but not. You don't just drink a little well, red wine. I will. Wine. I'll just have a couple of little glasses. You have four or five night. bottles. I will not. Do you want my glasses too? No, you really <laughs> Thank you. 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 Well, I'll tell you what to do. Have a beer with soda water. No, I'm not having a beer. Wouldn't you prefer just a cup of coffee? Nope. Mick's a pretty fussy eater, so it's really hard to cook him something different. It's sort of the same thing every week over and over again. And he's just starting now to eat a bit more like changes variety in food. He's even asked me to buy him fruit because of his car racing. He wants to stop eating so much junk. And He's got to have green apples, not red apples. He's got to have peaches, but I've got to peel the fur off them. He wants grapes. He wants green ones, not red ones. He wants bananas. He wants oranges, but they've got to be cut into four. So he's got all these little instructions with what he wants, but I've never in 11 years seen Mick eat a grape or a peach. And all of a sudden now he's asked for grapes and peaches. Meanwhile, back at our house, it was hell for leather once again. Now, tomorrow, I thought about 11 o'clock with the children and get your uniform. His mother's got the well, money for it. Is there anything that I say you have to say well, something you said different. to me last week, Mum, can we go and get my uniform next I week? Said, and I said yes. I said Mark's got and I going in to get our uniforms and stuff. Well, that won't be possible because I have to pay for it. I've only got to get a couple of pairs of shorts and stuff. Well, I'll still go with you. It's a waste of time you coming out. I just cut it out. I'm not going in tomorrow. I can't go any other day. I don't want... What's the issue you coming? How... I'm not going to send you just blindly off with three hundred dollars. What have I got to get a couple of pairs of shorts and some shirts? Well, you can you put them on a charge account? What? Can you charge them? What do you mean? Can you, Michael Baker, charge them to me? I don't see why you have to come. Well, I'm going because it's my money. Oh, it's just watching yourself, watching what Michael does. You know, have a little bit to say. Um, I think 
when I was brought up, I was told little kids were seen and not heard and sort of stuff. You know how kids are, they always want to be with the oldies and talk with the oldies and that. And um, I'm just watching myself, sort of like, you're starting to answer back, you're starting not to do the work, you're starting to eat things that aren't really good for him and that. Am I stupid? Is there something wrong with me today? No, nope, not at all. No matter what, I've... Watch it, what? there's nothing wrong with it. No, you said to me last week, well, I'll go and get your uniforms. I never said that. I you said, did? I said, I've got to go get uh, some summer uniforms. You didn't say you were going with Mark and... I never, said, I never asked well, you to come with me. in the meantime. Well, at 11 o'clock tomorrow, I'm taking you in to get your uniform. What's and this? then I'm going to pay for your uniform. What's this? Are you leaving work for no reason? Well, what's the point of me giving you $300 and you telling me when you get where to Central you, where Station you that you've lost it? Where you from? We don't need three pairs of shorts and three shirts. That's, that's not going to add you up to three. You need socks. I've really quite had enough of it. I think you better just bring him back and just tell him that's what's going well, to happen. Well, just told him he's going in tomorrow with you. Or he doesn't go. Simple as that. If he doesn't want to go, don't worry about it. Now, what are you going to do, the grass? Just give out a little bit. It's got a couple in it. Now, would you like to give us some of those pamphlets out this afternoon? Or are you too tired? I was, going to, I was going to do it tomorrow, but yeah, you're organising my life, you know. Mate, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. To organise your life. You're very spiteful today, Mark. I'm not being spiteful. I've hardly spoken to you. Exactly. That's why I'm in there listening to him getting in trouble. I'll come out to him and say, righto, do this right now, you know, so you're not in trouble. And same with his school, because when I left home and I stayed at a mate's place for, say, the last month of my year 10 before the exams, I was living in a mate's place and, you know, I mucked up totally with schoolwork and I don't want him to see him do this because he's twice as smart as me and Joanne put together. Because, you know, he wakes up, he reads a book. The only books I read are surfing magazines, you know. My older brother is always treating me like an adult, but my mother is always treating me like a child. He's rather spoiled. He gets most things that, we, oh well, that we can afford, but he has a lot of toys. He always has had a lot of toys, but then we, we've always had a lot of toys. I don't think that children should have quite as much as Michael, although he's pretty sensible. But I think you can give them too much too soon. But he's got to earn his next lot to get anything special like a speed boat. And I don't think he needs it just at the present moment. You know, he's, he's only young. Laurie? Laurie? Oh, Laurie. Oh, he's, sometimes he can be the nicest guy, like the best dad in the world, you know? And sometimes he can really get me going, like really get me fired. And I'll get really angry at him. Just come up here and just sit on the bed and listen to music and stuff. But sometimes he's, he's uh, especially as he's getting older, he's mellowing a bit. You haven't brought your blood pressure down enough, unfortunately. It's still the same, is it? Oh, it's still too much. Well, we'll have to increase your plendal then. Right. What are you on, uh, one a day? One of the morning, yeah. So take two a day, one in the morning, one right. at night. OK. Sorry. Let's see if Laurie passed his test or not, like his um, medical. Let's see if he can drive again. Why can't he drive? Because he's, he's <laughs> in bad condition. Really? Yeah, he didn't pass any of his tests. Laurie, mate, he's overweight, high blood pressure, a drunk, disorderly, stresses out, he won't pass. And he's, he's overweight, got everything That'll be the phone. Hello? Alan was right. Laurie did fail his medical, but he went on to another doctor and eventually passed the test. Oh, he's crazy. One of these days he'll drop at my feet and that'll be the end of Laurie. We have to sell up all these boats and cars and God knows what. Got you working, mate. Got you working. Oh, I'm all right. You go. Yeah. What do you say? Not a problem. Did you okay? I just... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've got to go. I've got to go and do an ECG. Yeah, you don't have to do it because you're. Yeah, right I did going. one. I had that one. When? Today, up there. I was right on the limit. He said, you drink? Do you smoke or drink? I said, oh, I don't smoke. I said, I do have the occasional drink. He said, what would you drink? I said, oh, I suppose I'd have um, 
minimum two, maximum four of an afternoon. I said probably six or seven on Saturdays, Saturdays and Sundays. Oh, that's not too bad, he said. Oh, dirty muggle. <laughs> then I pumped him full of Finergan and took him down there because he couldn't drive and he's passed. So that's good news. No, no, to the one round at Carring Bar. Yes. Yes. You have any trouble with blood pressure? Oh. I said, no. Nah. He said, oh, you're right on the limit. He said, you'll be OK, but... And he That's said, what I said, he asked him yeah, all he, about what the ifs and And then he said to me, uh, he said, uh, I better get your weight anyway. I mean, he said, uh, 99. So he got me different than the other bloke. He gave me a kilo, uh, pound lighter. Well, a kilo lighter, actually. Kilo lighter, 99. And he said, uh, well, I think from memory last time I put you through, he said, I put down on the form, a powerfully built man. That's why he said, well, you're certainly not fat. He said, you've got a bit of weight there. He said, but you're certainly, I wouldn't call you fat. I said, no, I didn't think so. He said, no, he said, you'll be right. He said, I'll just write on the form, powerfully built. It's just great being a dad. I know there's some bastard times in front of me, little fella, when he's probably 18 or 20, will probably want to try and knock me block off or something like that. I know I tried, I thought about it and stuff like that, but till then, I wouldn't have it any other way, but. And mummy, can't leave her out. She's our mate. Mum's the best. It's unreal being a parent. I never, I never thought it would be this good. After what everyone's told me and watching what my parents went through with us kids, I never ever thought being a parent would be a joy, but I am loving it. Oh no, the diet's gone now. We've got the licence. <laughs> Don't have to worry about the diet anymore. Good day. It's all over now. Mm. I don't remember much tonight because my head's going around in circles. I'll tell you that right now. Do you know, oh, dear, don't drink. You've had Finergan. I forgot all about that. I think it was you that offered you the beer, Mum. I'll tell you what, you say much more today and you're gone. Come on, Kitty. Did you get my other drink? I was waiting for you to finish off the one that you got there. Not get much to sleep. If I don't finish that one, then I haven't drunk as much. Did you hear that donkey ring us at 10 o'clock last night? Yeah, that right, right, that's right, I heard that. You flip. I'm offensive being someone at 10 past 10 I wasn't going to answer it, actually. Car. I was nearly... No, I'm off half asleep. I'm dropping things and... Oh, really? you got no idea, right? That's not sauce! <laughs> <laughs> That's not sauce. Do you want some sauce? I'm asleep. Give me that. I'm Do you want some sauce? <laughs> it's in the sauce, please. Did you tell him what I took? I can't even talk. I'm having trouble talking. My mouth won't open. That's all I need. Just spoil the sauce some more. I just have to, if you had to sit here, I would have poured that on. <laughs> then go to bed. I I'm going to have to. I'm going to fall asleep in a minute. We've got an air conditioner and pool at our house where Dion and Paul haven't. So since Kane they've been coming around quite a bit to cool off. It also gives Mum an excuse to hold and cuddle her grandson. I tell you, it's hotter in our house than it is outside. And we've got every window and every door open in the house. Even when he's a year old, it's, he's going to be feeling the heat worse than oh, he is now. Of course he is. He does, we've got, got he to start putting now. some money together for the deposit on your home. We've yeah, got to start thinking about it. Now, if you say 50, you come to me, I'll give you 50. That's 100 a week. It's not going to take as long, is it? No. Because, yeah. you know, $50 is $50, Diana. It's, it's so hard to get it, as you well know. I know. I'm not being bossy with you either. I'm only no, just trying to be... No, I understand. I know. I know how hard it is. But if even it's we both get put worse. all together $100 a week away, it won't take that long. No, I know. So let's, let's get you on the way to a deposit on the home. Oh, no. Me tomatoes. They're all done. I always say to my kids, if you go flatting or renting, don't have animals. Don't have the animals because they cost money. I know I've got two. I've got two dogs, two cats, two birds. It costs money. Now, those dogs must cost probably more than what my box has cost me. Take them to the vet. 
when I first had Paul. I had a two-bedroom little sort of cottage. It was just a cottage in Rotorua. And um, not very much money. No money. But we managed. So I suppose, you know, th you think about it. I think the first thing they've got to do is get into something, perhaps a unit, uh, and let the animals go, which is probably their saving money. I would, it would cost them at least the same as me, $60 a week. At the moment, I don't want to move. I just, at the moment, it's just like, if I could find a really nice brick house for about the same price, can't go not even $10 more, I'd move. And if you but can find so one cheaper? Now, it's so hard. It's really what hard. What if I found to find. one cheaper? Nicer. Cooler. It's a matter of getting your bond money together again. No, you don't. You, you just transfer, we can it transfer over. that over, darling. Yeah. You just transfer that. But we've got to think about the holes in the walls. Yeah, like there's a bit of repairs to be done at home first. We can get a removalist in a day. We can have it out in a day, can't we? Easy. <laughs> You'll come home and go, what's going on? <laughs> Dog's gone, bird's gone. <laughs> You walk into an empty house, there'll be a note on the fridge. No, there won't even be a fridge there, a note on the front door. Like his father, Mick also decided to get fit. You see, these old geriatrics have to take a lot of time out to get their body in premium condition. Well, where we go. Oh, it's not a job, put it in a bit. Uh, Mick's matured a lot in, 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 in his driving in the last 12 months to what he used to be. He, was, um, he, he raced in Appendix J there for a while, he had a Holden. And he got in the car and he thought he was going to come out and win straight off. He thought that we were a bunch of oldies that were driving around and he could come out and just cream us. It would, would, wasn't, didn't look so tough at all. But he found out that it's not like that at all because uh, Mick, <laughs> you know, he smashed a car up a few times and ran into a few other people and never, never really did much good. I think the best he finished was probably 12th or 10th or something. Uh, so there's obviously more to it than what meets the iron. It, uh, he, uh, you know, he found out the hard way. Up and sprint to the end. I think he's like me in a lot of ways, you know. He, uh, he's, he's lucky because he's got youth on his side. He's, you know, at 28 or 27, whatever he is. Um, he's sort of, um, you know, he's got another 10 or 15 years in front of him in his prime for driving the car, and uh, I think he'll get better and better as he goes along now. And when well, we've got a pretty good car, so, uh, you know, I can see him going really well. Although he had passed his medical, Laurie is still rather angry at Mick, believing that he hadn't done his best to help sell the car. I asked Mick to bring the Gedino over to fix up the problem. It just flattened the, flattens the batteries. It's on all the time, the ignition. When you leave the key off, the ignition's right. on. Remember? Hasn't he been putting it out the front? Ah, oh, no, it's too hard. I've been no petrol in it. Been too busy. Oh, didn't he put petrol in from last week? What do you think I'm in the room down buying petrol, getting the battery for it, taking the other battery back? Oh, God damn. I've got the wall fed. I'm going to take my billy car to him. I'm worried about the Commodore. Oh, he is naughty. Why didn't they ring us and say we can't put it out the front, come and do something What's about it? What's the point of putting it up there? All it's doing is getting knocked around. It's covered in shit and thing and dirty marks. I washed it the other day for nothing. It hasn't been anywhere. Oh, dear. But I thought I was just telling that. When I went today to get the car, it's out of petrol. I drove around the, down the service station to get some petrol because I had the, it didn't even have a container there. I'm running around trying to find a container to get the petrol. I get that, I get in it, it won't start. The battery's flat because I haven't fixed that up. So I take Dino back his battery to lend me, his new battery, said, make your battery stuffed. Borrowed another one off him. He like, thinks you're an idiot. Want you mm -hmm. I'll go make your, make your coffee. All right? Just lately, she's got a bit bossy, like, with um, moving out, doing this, doing that. Uh, in a way, I can, you know, she wants to help, you know. She under, well, she's she doing says it save for money. Kane. She, she says save Kane money. She to be cool and... You know, Save money, get rid of your animals. I don't want to move. It's at like the telling moment. her, right, eh? Get, get rid of Amber and Ginger. Yeah. You, you need money, you're selling all your toys and that. Why don't you sell your animals? It's stupid. I don't need to listen to crap like that, you know? Sell your animals. Sure, you don't have an animal to get rid of two years down the track, you know? You just don't do it. Yeah, but in a way, you know, like I said, she, she wants to help, you know, us cope with the heat and him. That's why she wants us to move, but. Well, I don't want to go through that removal shit again. Animal hair. Yeah, it's still got a bit of a... It's 
super beautiful boy, you know? It's not. Of Joyco. You've got to tread very, very gently with Paul and Dion. Um, I went up to the hospital the day I was up there with Laurie, and um, Paul rang me that night and said, You know, Mum, I kept on saying, You know, I'd love to pick him up. Can I pick him up? Can I wake him up? And they took exception to it. So I've got to tread very, very carefully because they're very possessive little parents at the moment. No, don't worry. Yeah? No. Yeah? Bye. Hang on. Look, the best nappy he's had in ages. You know, I'm not going to be told what to do with my son no more. I've had it. Instead of um, instead of them giving us advice, you know, they could help us out. Whether it be um, lend us money or whatever, you know. I'm not saying, I'm not. And I've got to stress this to everybody. I'm not there to bludge money, you know. When I went round and told Mum the house was hot, it wasn't for her to give me the money for an air cooler, you know. I just said the house is hot. Come on, come on, woo dear, woo dear. In it goes. Yes, you don't like water, do you? No, I don't like water either. <laughs> when you go over and explain the, your situation, like how I'm um, virtually bankrupt, they um, they have the hide to tell you that you, that you can save and stuff like that, or get rid of your dogs and shit like that. It's bullshit. As I said yesterday, mate, I save, I spend probably what my mum would spend in a week on our dogs and birds and whatever in, say, a month. <laughs> I've got a cup of coffee. Now, Kane, you've got to behave yourself here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, will you stop doing yeah, it? It's like you look Probably in trouble. Gosh, when I had Paul, I was dressmaking from home, had two boarders, went ushering at a theatre of a night time. Paul's father was a labourer during the day and a cleaner of a night time. But you've got to do it. And if you're persistent enough, someone's going to say, all right, fine, you know, give you a job. How do you feel? How do you feel? It's race day and it's Mick's debut in the new race car. Hi, I think he's kind of nervous at the moment. Hi. Hi. I did take this up to the media centre. It's above us, just yeah. roughly just above us. Give it to Ingrid. Tell them that's the change of name so that they get a bite over the microphone. Right? Ingrid. To Ingrid in the media centre just upstairs. The nights before he races, he doesn't sleep one bit. He might sleep for a couple of hours, but getting to sleep is a problem. Then once he wakes up during the night, he just he can't get back to sleep. Just, and on the way to the track, he's nervous and nothing that you say to him. He's not really listening. He's just thinking about what's going to happen. Everything's just going straight over his head. Golden leader come up then? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just every now and again, if you, you get a chance, just turn it on for half a lap or something, your gearbox. Yeah. He's just keeping in front of the BMW. Still holding it. And I think he's just holding it there, that he's just doing, that's all he's doing. To know that your husband's out there and he's not far behind all the big guys. So that's really good. He's right. He's where he was. He's keeping his distance from that black car, but he's just taking it easy. He's just taking it easy. Got four to go, love. Make your fingers crossed and everything else. My heart's going bang, bang, bang. bang. I'd, sooner be, I'd sooner be in the car than out here. I'd sooner be, I'd sooner, oh, it'd be easy. I'll hate it out here. He's got no fear. He just goes for it. As quick as he can go, he'll just go to his limit. Half the time, I think he goes over his limit. He just goes for it. His times are down now, he's having a bit of a problem, I'd say. He's not there. Yes, he is. He's not in it. 
He's not in the finish. Yes, he is. He's the next car around. Come on, Mick, just get it there, mate. Oh, shit, it is. Oh, no! Is him coming in, mate? I think she's fucked. I'd say he's got no oil pressure. So far, including buying the car and racing at Eastern Creek the other week, it's cost about $25,000. Um, but I suppose his hobby is just more expensive than anything that I could use $25,000 for. I reckon you can see oil coming out of it. Where's it coming from? It's coming from the A few days later, Mick was looking for the problem. It looks like it's going to cost a bit of money to fix it, and that'll hurt him for a while. I'm going to get up next time I see him. That's freaking disgusting. Yeah, well, you think they'd have a dozen of those parts hanging around if they've got so Yeah, they could have cars. easily just said, oh, look, you know, we haven't got one on us, we'll put it in for you or something. Yeah. Or... I've got to race a car like that. It's just had it. It's blown a head gasket or it's blown the head or something. It's cracked a cracked head. And it'll cost about $600 to fix. And Paul had to apply for a loan this afternoon to get the money because we don't have it, obviously. And we don't have a car. We need the car, you know. So um, that's another debt to pay off. Uh, it's probably got a broken ring, cracked piston, something pretty serious. So uh, unfortunately, it's not just a matter of fixing the oil leak. The motor's got to come out and be stripped down and rebuilt, basically. There's not much else we can do about it. So it's probably going to run into a few dollars. It's not fair, you know. We've got enough on our plate at the moment and we don't need this. I mean, Paul, Paul is just like suicidal at the moment. He said to me today on the phone, he just, he was so upset and he just said, yeah, I've just had it, you know, I just feel like ending it all. It's not worth it. Like, all we've seen to do is dig a pit and get deeper and deeper into debt. It's just, you know, why can't it happen to someone who's got money? Dan and Paul are going through a pretty rough time at the moment, but little do they know, there's some laughs coming ahead, especially in the next episode. So watch it.